Marshawn. And I'm Amanda Ford. And this is our first episode of Breaking Barriers in an ASD kind of world. We are so excited to have you all. We are so excited to be here. This, for me, has been a work in progress for various reasons. But Amanda and I are going to share with you right now before we get into the show and our topics and our guest today, who is a very special guest. We want to tell you why we're doing a show of this nature. So, Amanda, I'll start with you with your background because uh, she's more than this, just this co-host with me. <laughs> so, autism spectrum disorder has been something that has been really close to my heart because of my little sister, Caitlin. I've been um, <laughs> just a big sister to her <laughs> for uh, 18 amazing years. And um, through growing up with her, I've been immersed in the world of autism and I've watched her go through her services in ABA therapy and it inspired me to eventually become a ABA therapist myself. And um, I'm gonna be completing my master's degree in applied behavior analysis in December, so that's super that's exciting. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I know it's a lot of work. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah, yeah. And I also compete in pageants, and one of the things that pageant systems have uh, kind of pushed is community service. And so for me, it was an easy pick of doing um, autism awareness and acceptance. And so for the past decade, I've been dedicating my time and energy to helping the autism community. And this podcast is another way in which I feel like I can spread that message and inspire others to really understand what autism is and accept people like my little sister. Right, right. But now give us your title. I think you're being extremely <laughs> yeah. humble. Um, right now I am Miss California 2021. <laughs> Yes, that's amazing. And I'm so glad that our producer, Aaron, got you involved to uh, share this journey with me. So, again, my name is Till Marchand. Um, formerly, um, I've had a show in the past on Nickelodeon. And uh, I went through, after my show was finished, Kenan and Cal show, I also then experienced a... Um, intense family tragedy and I took time off um, a lot of years time off so I could focus on my daughter and just circle back at some point to the entertainment industry and uh, I felt like I took longer than I wanted to but a long leave of absence was necessary to focus on her yeah. and to allow my daughter to thrive and grow and all of that which Absolutely. she's amazing <laughs> So um, here I am. I've um, gone back into the industry within the last few years. It's been um, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of okay with if you gotta kind of crawl <laughs> then walk then run. You gotta I'm okay it. with the new beginnings, the reinvent. Um, but in the meantime, as well, I kind of got into um, some of my community service work, and I have always done a lot of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. You know, philanthropy is my yeah. thing, just giving and serving in the community. Yeah. So I've always done that. So I have very close friends. Um, I want to make sure I get their uh, organization um, correct. And who had a child with mm -hmm. a disability. And I believe that's when I first got introduced to a lot of the um, that world of people with physical, though, mm -hmm. disabilities. So my friends, Joe and Stormy mm -hmm. Sweet, um, have a organization, I just wanna make sure I say this right. Mm -hmm. It is the FragileHearts.org organization, Aaliyah Sweet Fragile Hearts Foundation. They've been going on now 20 years. If anyone wants to look them up, again, FragileHearts.org. And I was introduced that way to the community. And it just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. You know, what they had to go through with their child, one of their children. And um, I was amazed the time and the effort that family puts in and the endurance and the love that they show, right? So from there, I had someone talk to me as well about ABA. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 thank you. But what I love is that our 
other careers and profession, it's a paraprofession. Yeah. So technically, you can take, as an RBT, a registered yeah. behavior technician, yeah. you can take that and use it in any field. Absolutely. So, you know, any field to bring uh, community and communication together. Mm -hmm. And since I'm so into mediations and advocacy yeah. work, I thought, okay, this makes me look real legit. <laughs> <laughs> Too legit to quit. Yeah. This makes me look real legit that I can have uh, meet people if I'm doing my mediations work, yeah. my consulting work, things that I love to do yeah. um, with youth at risk and teens. Mm -hmm. I'm really in that area, um, just bridging gaps. Yes. So that was the long story of me, but we're both doing our thing now, you in pageantry, me back in entertainment, um, and I'm so excited to be here, but this is another thing mm -hmm. that has been so, um, I've been so impassioned yeah. about with working with kiddos mm -hmm. and the families to thrive. And I wanna say this, I'm so blessed where I am with my daughter. Mm -hmm. I look at other families with kids on the spectrum and all I want them to know is that you all can continue to strive mm -hmm. and live your best amazing life right where you are. Absolutely. Agreed? Absolutely. Agreed, Caitlin? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. with that said, I'm going to let Amanda introduce our guest because this is your sis. Yes. Yep. So thank Girl, you. Girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another thing that I just want to uh, address for everybody is that when we're doing this podcast, we are coming from a place of love for the community and not as experts in the field. <laughs> we are not coming really even though we both have work in applied behavior analysis where we do therapy with children, that's not what we're pushing here today. We are advocates Absolutely. for the community, for parents, for individuals themselves, or others that are just interested in knowing what autism is about. And that's why I'm really excited to share with you guys my little sister who has a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. I wanna give her a voice because she is a part of the community. And so with that, I would like to introduce you to my little sister. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm Caitlin. I'm 18 years old and I have autism. And one of the most challenging things about me having autism is just the obstacles that I have throughout my whole, how many years? 18 years of with autism and it's been great, it's been great. So can you tell me a little bit about some of the good things about autism? And then you can also share with me and our audience some of the things that you've struggled with because of your diagnosis. Well, the good thing about autism is that you have people around you, you know, like what she said before with like the love and industry that we all have. And the, some of the difficult things about autism is you struggle with it a lot. You tend to do this a lot, you tend to stem a lot. But the thing is, is, is that what Amanda said before with love and everything, it's just, it's hard for everyone to accomplish the autism. It's just hard. Yeah, it can definitely be a challenge. And I know that it's something that you've been able to work through with the help of our parents and people in the community, as well as other therapists. So with that, um, what do you think is one of the biggest struggles that you've overcome? Probably seeing fireworks. I know people tend to scream when they see fireworks. They go, ah, someone stop. <laughs> and you just wear headphones just to calm yourself, just to wear headphones, just to block out all the sound. And That's great. So um, for our audience, something that you might not know about autism is that a lot of individuals on the spectrum um, have difficulties processing sensory um, whether it be loud noises, people in crowds, and what my little sister is sharing right now is for years she had difficulties actually being able to sit and listen to or even see fireworks because of how um, overwhelming it was. And it, in the past few years, she's been able to overcome that through using different techniques like wearing um, sound canceling headphones or even just playing music while watching them. That's great. And last year, we actually went to our uh, community's fireworks show, and oh. she was sitting there yelling at the fireworks. Right. What and were I, you saying, Kate? I really don't want to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. And you know, I think what 
um, uh, many people do not realize that many of us in general are sensitive mm -hmm. to certain things. Yeah. And I think because there's so much more awareness in the world just from, I like to bring this up, between social justice, the elections that have gone on, COVID, I think people have become more aware mm -hmm. of their space, right? The space that they reside in, the space of others. So now we're looking at things from a different perspective. Yeah. Like, I feel those who want to elevate and to live a better life are starting to say, I give you this space to be who you are. Yeah. You mean you? It's like a, it's like a, it's like a space of justice. I, I guess. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was great. Yeah. Let's just pin that. Yeah. 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 A space of justice. You are so right. With that said, I was watching a movie that everyone needs to look at. It's so wonderful. It's called The Reason I Jump. So there's a book, and now it's a movie. So I watched it real quick, so probably won't talk about it a lot in this episode, but another episode we'll talk about the reason I jump, and again, about an ASD world. And one of the things a person said was just that, in his, who's nonverbal, and in his development, he said he has felt in the past mm -hmm. that his rights were being taken away from him that it became more of a civil right thing, mm -hmm. that he wasn't able to occupy space appropriately or with a voice and yeah. different things. But now there's um, there's so many things available now, new therapies and different things that he is literally thriving. Yeah, yeah. He is literally thriving. And I, at the end of the day, whether you're neurotypical, ASD, mm -hmm. we all want to thrive, right, yeah. Caitlin? Yes. We all want to thrive. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and I think, well, do you want to share something, Kate? What? Oh. <laughs> anything you want to say? Yeah, anything you want to say. I just want to say what she said before, we thrive. It's what, it's what we bring to our community and what we share with each other. You don't have to be afraid of saying anything like, oh, I have this disease and I can't control it. You have to see someone who you actually care about and someone that you actually trust in your life instead of just hiding your feelings, hiding your emotions, just say it out loud. Yeah, that's a big thing is, is acceptance for the community. I think a lot of people are afraid to either talk about their diagnosis sometimes, like if, mm -hmm. if individuals are um, more... A lot of people are, are scared, but they're mostly frightened to say what they have to say about their diagnosis. Yeah, mm. about their di a lot of people might be afraid to say what they have to say about their diagnosis. I right? think families right. too, the parents... I think the parents are afraid. Uh, sometimes I've, because I've um, assisted and served with mm -hmm. younger kids, mm -hmm. the families, the parents that are young mm -hmm. are afraid to say anything. It's, and then they, I've been told they feel like they're in a bubble. Yeah. That no one else knows or they're going through it by themselves. Mm -hmm. Also, I've experienced culturally, mm -hmm. certain races um, yeah. don't want to accept it and admit their child yeah. is on the spectrum. So again, we want this yeah. podcast mm -hmm. to be a place that we start raising vibrations. Yeah. Yeah. We start saying, you better wave your flag yeah. and tell everybody this is who I am. Girl, bye. Right? Yeah. You want to do yeah. that. You want to be able to say, this is who I am. Allow me to sit at the table. Yes. I deserve to be at the table. Yes. You, you deserve every right to be at the table. Yes. In my period, you deserve every right to be at the table. And you have every right to be at the table. So I think that that's something that we want to do with this podcast is uplift the voices of individuals with autism Also, just and their speak families. out. Just speak out and say what you have, to, what you need to say. That's all you got to say. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so true. For families, for siblings, for anyone just supporting mm -hmm. someone who is on the spectrum yeah. in whatever area because they they do put many um diagnoses on the spectrum for the yes. purpose of getting the the help that uh families need um so yes i i believe you know making space and that's what we want to do with this podcast we want it to be fun and sometimes it's going to be super super deep and yeah. maybe sad and but we mainly want to inform mm -hmm. educate 
empower, enlighten. Yes, absolutely. Right? The world to this space. And then give resources. Let you know mm -hmm. what's going on in yeah. the world. Yeah. There's a lot going on that benefits the ASD community, mm -hmm. whether it's in jobs, whether it's in the community, whether it's in um, supported living, all yes. of that. There is yeah. a world where people are thriving, mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So, Kate, let me ask you, what can you say is your one of your greatest accomplishments of where you were maybe two years ago to where you are now? Well, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing about overcoming the, all of this about my fears is watching the fireworks without wearing headphones is probably the biggest accomplishment that I ever had. And also, we want we want everyone to know that there's there's nothing to be afraid of if you're talking about this to anyone. Just speak with your heart, speak with your like words, and just say. Let me watch the fireworks without headphones mm -hmm. and just wear headphones and just listen to music. That's all you got to do. Yeah. The, like what you said before with this podcast, we want this podcast to be, you know, maybe deep and maybe sad and you may cry a little bit, mm -hmm. but just it's all about love and 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 just inspirational is what I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. absolutely. I want to, before we end this, I want to, um, I was just telling Amanda this when we were getting set up, because again, we're kind of like, um, little unscripted here, yeah, right? No, this is very off which, script. Which I, I like, Girl. I like this to just <laughs> yeah. be a dinner table kind of feel. We, we just talk as is and let our hearts pour out. This is a normal dinner conversation That's with all what? your friends and family. This is a normal conversation yeah. <laughs> at the dinner table. That's right, Kayla. <laughs> But when, if, if people can tune in to, again, The Reason I Jump, there's a, uh, one of the uh, featured uh, individuals on there, his name is Ben, and one of the things that he said, I, I wrote it here, he said, change the conversation about autism by allowing the autistic to be a part of the conversation. Yes. And that's what we want to do, just let people be a part of the conversation. Yes. I think that's in all areas of life. Or let yeah. people be heard. Let people be exactly. heard. Exactly. Yeah. Because a lot of times we don't know. We don't really know how similar we are and our differences, but how we're more alike in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Perspective is everything. Yeah. But if we cannot allow each other to be part of the conversation, mm -hmm. right? My biggest thing is being dismissed. I, woo, don't dismiss me. Yeah. Don't, don't dismiss, dismiss me. Don't dismiss her, please. Because <laughs> <laughs> because then she'll dismiss you. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it just irritates me. In other words, I don't have to agree with what you say, yeah. but I can defend to your right to say it. To say yeah, it, absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. So with that said, I think we got this in the yeah. can, you all. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did this, and Caitlin, you are amazing. You are amazing as well. Yeah. And we, and we really thank you for being here and for being so It was honest. an honor for me talking to you about what I was going through and how my life is for the past 18 years to finally talk to someone who has experience with it. And mm. God bless your heart. Woo! Thank you. Pray the Lord. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Yes. Amanda, <laughs> your sister Caitlin was amazing. And I hope the audience can get a feel for um, her energy yeah. out there. Like we got in yeah. here. And you were actually su a little surprised. Oh, huh? She did man. <laughs> because... As we know, people with autism can be very introverted, yeah. right? And not want um, just a lot of things in their environment yeah. could actually um, kind of, for lack of a better word, set them off, yeah. so to say. So yeah. you tell us yeah. how you feel yeah. about your sister. And then you uh, want to talk a little bit more that we didn't get into. We just didn't yeah. want Caitlin to be here too long yeah. um, in case she did get a little overwhelmed. Yes. Absolutely. But she did amazing. Yeah, so I am, for one, so proud of her. And I, she honestly just blew my mind because, um, like we've talked about, 
Uh, autism can cause some individuals to have a little bit of rigidity with routine and before coming here she was having a really hard time. It was definitely a break in her everyday routine. We've been going through COVID. We've been at home, right? We're homebodies. Right, so right. just for her to actually get out here and to sit and talk with us. She's just met you for the first time, just met our producer for the first time and for her to just jump in and talk about herself like that was amazing for me to see and yeah. I, my mom and dad were here and I could see my mom and dad in the corner starting to cry too just because something that we didn't get to share is um, her diagnosis story and okay. um, when she was a baby uh, we just we noticed a lot of things that were different with her development and for a long time we thought maybe that she was deaf because she wouldn't respond to us like saying her name she would only respond to us saying certain things to her and when we took her to doctor to doctor to doctor um, they were just telling us like it's either in our heads or that um, that's just how she is and weren't giving us answers when we finally did get a diagnosis for her when she was four years old which is actually pretty late for a lot of children that receive diagnoses the doctors told us she would never do this she would never do that she actually wasn't speaking until she was five years old okay. and so for her to now be able to come onto the show <laughs> talk about herself, give a little bit of her story. She's every day overcoming things that people have told us that she would never do. You know, it's funny how she talked about the fireworks. For a typical person, that would be, it's a firework, yeah. it's no big deal. But for someone on the spectrum, that is a big deal. Yeah. Or any, you know, that type of yeah. sensory um, issue. Um, I like how she, for her, that is so big. And again, in doing the show Breaking Barriers yeah. in an ASD kind of world, mm -hmm. that's what we want to do, right? Yeah. Break those barriers, yeah. those stereotypes of how uh, someone with autism shows up. Yeah. And for us to have a better understanding yeah. and not judge, yeah. right, on how something for us could be like, oh, it's a firework, it's yeah. loud, but to them, yeah they could take off running or start oh, yeah. screaming yeah. or just have a complete meltdown. Yes, absolutely. That was actually one of the biggest, and I think that's why it comes to mind for her. It was one of the biggest struggles that she felt like July, the month of July in general for years was just a month of fear for her. She would spend days locked, locking herself in the bathroom where there was no windows, where sound would be a little bit more dampened because she was afraid that because people will just buy fireworks and let them off so it's not just fourth of july it's that whole okay. few weeks where people are randomly setting off fireworks and it would set her off for lack of a better word but right. like into those meltdowns right. and in the past few years being able to come out of that getting her the right tools giving her the coping skills that she needs yes. to be able to actually enjoy mm -hmm. events like that especially like last year we had her at the community event so around people right. <laughs> around the fireworks and I think she kind of mentioned too that she did it without her headphones which she huge huge because she's only been able to do it with headphones mm -hmm. for years um, and that's a lot of stimulation going on, oh, yeah. right? Right. And, you know, I, I want to ask you personally, how does it make you feel to see the back then, mm -hmm. Caitlin, to now? It's been a journey. Uh, it, it makes me really, really emotional because, um, I mean, you see her now and she's super bubbly. She's ready to, to talk and, and jump in where, where she ready. can. Yeah. But it was a different story years ago and not just with fireworks and like uh, being overstimulated, but her lack of um, social skills and her lack of communication left her frustrated a yeah. lot. And so she used to engage in a lot of aggressive behaviors towards my parents where she would actually like hit them. She would hurt them, pinch them. And it's not because she wanted to, she doesn't want to hurt anybody. She's a sweet soul, but that lack of being able to communicate to others is what led her to using the only form of communication she had, which was to let you know, I don't like this. I don't want this. And it was through aggression, Right. but years of help from my parents, help from people in the community and help from therapists so that mm -hmm. she's been able to come out of that and learn how to communicate and learn how to deal with her, her emotions and they're big emotions, right? right? Exactly. And, and exactly. I, I'm just so proud of her that she's been able to come so far. And here, here's the thing too, again, 
real quick, let's talk about why we wanted to do the show. Mm -hmm. So for me, so I have been talking to our producer Aaron mm -hmm. about the show. Um, we were just throwing around different podcasts, to yeah. be honest. It wasn't just this. It was different podcasts. And, it, you know, part of me having so much to say, um, I've been, you know, some people have presented me with doing a lifestyle type of show mm -hmm. before. I have this personality where literally any and everyone will come up to me and just tell me about their life yeah. in the strangest way. Yeah. Like things, may it may be like TMI. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, I don't know, we just start talking. And, you know, I've been in Whole Foods. Everyone knows Whole Foods <laughs> is my second home. And there has been times where someone has shared something with me. And I've just, and they had, you could tell they yeah. had some anxiety. And I maybe spoke a few words to them. Mm -hmm. And then they would turn back and say, Wow, thank you, because it was your presence that yeah. just made a difference. Mm -hmm. So I have always felt something inside yeah. of me that I feel that God has put inside of me that um, allows me to have that permeate into someone else, yeah. right? So that's why some people were like, oh, we should do this type of reality show mm -hmm. with you, a lifestyle show, yeah. and this show. And I'm like, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. But then as time went by and I started um, engaging with kiddos and doing uh, social skills and different things. Yeah. So yes, I'm an actress. And then I started like teaching the social dramatic skill sets yeah. for behavior and their therapy with kids on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I'm in classes and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's almost the same. Yeah. Like the repetition, the repetition, yeah. the repetition. And I started having like all these aha moments, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things that I can honestly say that's helped me mm -hmm. in this field is patience. Yes. Yes. So one of the things that people hear me say a lot is understanding and accepting the power of pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I'm working with kiddos like this mm -hmm. and we're doing scene study, I, I have my kiddos mm -hmm. work, you know, write out, we write out scripts mm -hmm. and perform because if they've had like a really intense day mm -hmm. let's just write about it let's just talk about it yeah. so we write it out and I have them perform and I remember a kid one day stopped and was like oh my gosh like he realized he insulted his teacher wow but yeah. he was able to change the narrative he was able to change the ending of the story because he didn't want it to be what actually happened, happened. that mm -hmm. maybe he pinched her in class mm -hmm. and then he got suspended for the day he wanted the narrative to be that he used wow. his words mm -hmm. appropriately and said you know this is so and so i'm sorry and that was it yeah and so we were able to change a lot of narratives wow so i'm saying all that to say that even in like that person in whole foods who told me one day wow what you said really calmed my spirit i started to realize that we all mm. needed this calm in our lives period yeah. right yeah and so it's almost the same like that type of therapy that we need to be in a better place yes Right. And that's why for me, I said, I would like to do a show like this mm -hmm. to a talk about the resources that are out there, yeah. too, and uplift, but maybe to uplift families. We want Breaking Barriers to be a lifestyle show. Yes. We have the experience. Mm -hmm. We're not the experts, per se, mm -hmm. but we have the experience. We will bring yeah. experts on. <laughs> yes. We will yeah. have guests like that. But we wanted this to be more about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's why we tagged it. Breaking yeah. barriers in an ASD kind of world, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. And then having people like your sister who really sheds light on mm -hmm. everything going on. And then with you being Miss California <laughs> 2021, that's really big. But then you had this passion to be in the field, yeah. which I know helps your family and helps your sister. That's amazing. So I think we both feel like we're contributing on a higher level in life, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with all of that. And I'm really excited to be getting this show started with you. I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm so excited that we were able to share 
my little sister's story are are separate stories too and how this has led us to this podcast and this has been a really unscripted journey unscripted (laughs) but we're having fun doing it and we hope you guys stay with us on the journey um at some point you, you know we want you to call in to us and write to us and just give us some feedback or your thoughts and some questions and we'll do our best to answer yeah. right mm-hmm. with amanda getting her bcba yeah. we'll talk about yeah. that what that means later we'll yeah. wrap this episode up yeah. because that's really big because that takes you to another level yeah. in this field yeah. and uh exposes you to to really more in-depth work yeah. in assessing um people on the asd spectrum so um i'm till marshawn and i'm amanda ford we'll see you next time thanks